morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, we're going to be diving right back into these investment, uh, st the investment piece today. Again, uh, with me, uh, Jeremy Reddick over in uh, Brentwood with Virtue Capital. Uh, Jeremy's a good friend and uh, a special guest to have on because we, I've been wanting to do this for some time, and I'm really excited to be able to share with you. I've talked a lot hedging strategies as an example, so it's great to be able to share some, some new things with you uh, with regard to that and how in fact to improve your portfolios and your uh, your investments so one of the things we were talking about the the uh, what happened last year so February 18 2020 from that period to March 23rd uh, the S&P closed down over 33 percent due to COVID okay and Jeremy this was a this was an incredible as you said one of the fastest declines to 30 percent or the fastest actually in history and uh, and how that ended and then I think in fact the very that was one of the crazy things to me as well and I don't recall exactly but the next day March 24th I think the market was up over 10 percent in a day I mean it was one of the craziest things ever but that's let's put that now in the context of the history in fact of US bear and bull markets and let's take a look at that next slide while we do that so Jeremy if you would on the when we're looking at this one on history of bull and bear quite a bit different than what we experienced last year yeah, absolutely. I, and the average uh, bull market is 6.6 .6 years and has about a 340% return over that time frame. Obviously, we went over a decade on our previous bull run that we had. Uh, you can see on the chart, it's pr pretty hard to see, I'm sure, on, on TV here. Uh, but it also shows uh, the average bear market is about 1.6 years with almost a 40% decline. Uh, which is obviously a, a huge number, especially uh, for those of you that are in pre-retirement or retirement, right? That, that, that's a, a huge number to potentially lose. And that's why it's important for us today to discuss, further discuss dynamic investing and tactical investing and how they can marry together with one another as well as strategic investing. You know, it's an extra interesting point too with bulls and bears. One, how long, the, as you can see, it's a pretty dramatic difference. You're talking a 6.6 .6 year average that a bull might run and how the longest bull market in history we just came out of going 11 years so tremendous there the average return again of th plus 339 percent on a bull market and think from from the bottom of the market let's say at the uh, in March of, of 09 to how much that ran up uh, what the percentages were there relative to the bear markets which are less severe in terms well less um, lengthy one to 1.6 years we had 2000 through 2002 that period almost three years and in October of 07 to March 9 basically about an 18 month period for that uh, bear market and then of course these bulls that run longer let's look in fact now this is where one of the things to take away from that is the mathematics of losing money so this next chart in fact shows how much money when you have a drop in the market okay when you're when you're poor and, and how your portfolio by the way man matches up to the market. Did it take a more severe drop? Now, if you've got a blend of bonds in with your portfolio, it was likely not quite as severe, though depending on the asset allocation model, you could still see big drops even with bonds mixed in. And Jeremy, this is one of those areas where sometimes people don't realize uh, how much you, more you have to gain after a loss. Yeah, as you can see on the chart there, you, we talked about the 30% decline that we experienced last year in 22 trading days. And, and on the chart right there, if you look at on the left side, 30% uh, amount of loss, which we saw in 22 trading days, it, it, it would take a 43, well, 42.9% return just to get to a break even. And if you were earning 10% a year to the far right, you'll see it would take 3.7 years to get to a break even. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we didn't experience that last year. Uh, it was the fastest 30% recovery in the history of the stock market. But it's important to know that that's not normal, right, Hank? Exactly. I mean, when you see that, it could have taken you three or four years to get back to a break even. And folks, that's if you're not withdrawing anything from your accounts. If you're drawing, which most people in retirement are, and if you're over a certain age, you have to. Um, so it, it's something to keep in mind, and it should mm -hmm. be top of mind. Uh, if, if you were to, is your portfolio in a position that can weather a storm like that? Exactly. And when you look, in fact, at the chart, to, to Jeremy's point about the timeframes here, if you look at the 45% uh, there, 
there on your left, that 45% drop, you need a 81.8% return to take about 6.3 years. Well, in fact, what we saw in uh, 2000 through 2002, a 46% loss, and it took approximately seven years to get back to break even again. And in 08, when we saw the market drop 55%, it was about a five-year recovery to get back to, just to get back to break even. And by the way, if you, if you look back from 2000, right, to 2007, that seven-year period, you just were at a break-even only to go right into another bear market. So technically, it really went, it was like having a long, an even longer recovery period because you were in the market for basically about 12 years just to even, uh, just to break even. So we need to plan, and do you, in fact, are there, this next slide, or this is a great question, are there investment strategies that seek more consistent returns with less volatility? And of course, that's what we're talking about today. So uh, Jeremy, on this uh, consistent return versus traditional relative return strategies, why don't you talk a little bit about those for, for everyone? Yeah, so you can see there are a consistent return, which is important, right? Um, there, there's a big difference in consistent return and relative return. And on the left there, you'll see that consistent return defines success as receiving a consistent return. Most people, whether you're retired or not, would prefer a consistent return versus relative return, which defines success by outperforming, by beating its benchmark. So in other words, if, if a, a mutual fund was down 10%, but the benchmark was down 12 or 13 percent, they would define that as success. Well, somebody in retirement or really any investor, uh, they're not going to define a 10 percent decline success just because the benchmark was only down 12%. Uh, consistent return seeks low volatility and, and attempts to limit market risk where rel relative return does not do that. Uh, consistent return research uh, is, is designed and based on the needs of the individual versus on relative return, which as you can see is based more on institutional investors. You know, and it's a good point here about consistent return, relative return. Uh, Tony Robbins in his book, Money Matters, he does a great job of showing uh, two different investors. And he showed they each started with $500,000, okay? So investor one has a half a million dollars in their account. They're going to take 5% a year uh, for income from that account. So 5% of 500000 are starting out at $25,000. Now, Tony in his example shows that, of course, he has that going up, increasing with inflation. So that 25 each year goes up a little bit, right? A few hundred dollars at a time to keep up, keep pace with inflation so that the purchasing power is protected. So in the first example, he showed this investor retiring into a bear market similar to what we saw, in fact, from 2000 through 2002. In fact, precisely that way. <laughs> and he showed then what would happen as you're taking money out of those accounts. And in his example, that person ran out of money, I think it was in about uh, 15 years, all right? right about age 80, they're out of money, they're broke. Out of that half a million they started with, they ended up taking out of total with returns and everything of about $580,000. Now think about this, okay? They average return, this consistent return, the average return was 8%. However, because they're drawing down, even though they're, they're only drawing down five, they're averaging eight, but because of the bear market, that sequence of return that reduced down the amount that they had, they never fully recovered uh, from that, and that's caused them to run out of money. Now, we, we look at investor number two. All right, same scenario, $500,000 in their retirement account. They're taking out 5% as a withdrawal. Okay, going up with inflation. The difference is they retired into a bull market and he showed them running with that bull for about seven years and then got hit with the bear market. The difference for this person was they were able to get, take money out until age 90, right? He ran it out to age 90 and they were consistently able to keep that income coming in, increasing with inflation and still had over a million dollars left in their account at age 90. That's the difference, okay? And that's why you have to plan. Sequence of returns is a real risk. And having a plan that gets into, by the way, both average 8% a year. 
but that sequence of return when you got hit with the bear market and that's why that critical period five years prior to retirement and five years into retirement is so important to have defensive strategies like what Jeremy is sharing with us today and we're talking about with the, the uh, tactical and the dynamic strategies so how is a consistent return for and this is the other thing about consistency what the difference here Jeremy's not it's not just eight percent with all that volatility and averaging it that relative return but consistent return where you reduce down the volatility while having that stability in there so how is a concern a consistent I can almost talk today how is a consistent return portfolio built well a consistent uh, portfolio is built number one uh, it's trying to eliminate emotion which we'll talk a little bit uh, about right uh, actually it's number two on the slide but to me it's always top of mind is, is is so many investors make mistakes based on emotion and I know we've got a slide that hopefully we'll get to today that that talks about that and we also attempt to sidestep volatility and and downturns long downturns in the stock market right because the short ones if you stay invested like we saw last year it's easy to recover from but if it's a prolonged downturn and you're taking money out of your account that's a whole nother ball game there we go so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna take a break when we come back we in fact are gonna talk about how emotion-based decisions and unfortunately for many investors this is what what one of the things that sabotaged this right you see this this last year is an, a, a prime example when you see the market it drops so fast in fact in some ways the fact that it dropped as fast as it did compared to other bear markets may have been a blessing for some because it hit so hard and so quickly that they didn't even have a time to to adjust they were scared they would they may have wanted to bail out but by the time we we hit bottom in 30 days and started back up again they were like okay okay they're calming down a little bit but in a typical bear market lasting as long as it does you see a lot of times emotion we get scared and we we get out of the market at the wrong time um, we we then stay out of the market maybe too long so having a way to help us uh, coach us through that and in and using these different strategies a means to help with that is, is going to be so important all right we're going to take a break when we come back we'll share more with you about that very thing uh, join us here we'll be right back on the retirement report